Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next tutorial in the Coding Geometry Dash in Java series. If you remember from the last tutorial what we got to was having a image on the screen that is able to be rotated, scaled, and translated. So we have the transformations actually working properly. In this tutorial what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding a camera so we can draw everything relative to the position of the camera. And the camera is going to take up the entire width and height of this actual screen. The way we're going to be doing this is a little bit hacky and is not the way that you want to typically do it if you are building your own render and everything, but it'll work for our purposes and that's all that matters. As long as it works, we're good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Jade because cameras are actually sort of inherent in engines. You need a camera in order to have an engine. I'm going to add this to Git. And then what we're going to need with a camera is we're going to need a transform. So we'll say public camera transform, transform. And actually we don't even need a, yeah, we don't even need a transform. We just need a position. Uh, this will be the position of the camera. And then we'll say alt enter. And then we'll go into here and we will say, I will take, we'll keep track of that position by having a public vector two position. And then we will say right in here, this dot position equals position. And so that should be good. Should be all we need for a camera, really. Um, and yeah, I think that's good. And then we'll go into our scene class, our abstract scene class, because every scene will need a camera. So we'll say camera, camera. And then right here, we will say, um, whenever somebody calls this, we will initialize it by saying this dot camera equals a new camera, just so that we have a camera. And then we'll give it a new vector too just position it at zero, zero, which is fine. And then what we're going to do after that, we also need a render in every single scene. So we'll wait on the render. What we do need right here is a list of game objects. And so this list of game objects is going to be, um, and it's getting confused right here. So we'll change this to graphics 2D. And then we'll say import java.util.list. Okay, and so what this list of game objects is going to be is all the game objects that are in our scene. So this will be useful because we'll be using this for our physics detection, all that sort of stuff. And every scene is going to have a list of game objects. So pretty basic. It's what you would expect in a game scene. Let's go into our Jade and create one more new class. And we will call this our render. And then we'll say add. This render is going to have a list of game objects as well, because this is going to be the list of game objects that it is going to draw. And then we'll say game objects. And then we'll hit alt enter on that one. And actually, let's go back to the scene real quick. I forgot to initialize this. So game objects equals a new array list. There we go. That way we just have it all set up for us. And then we'll go back into this render. And then we'll say when somebody creates a render, they need a camera. And so this will be the camera that we are using. And then we'll have a camera here. And we will say this dot camera equals camera. And then this dot game objects equals game. And we don't have game objects. Okay, this dot game objects equals a new array list. There we go. And so I'm sort of just going off the top of my head here, coming up with these because we are doing it a little bit differently than how I did it in my code but this is going to be a better way than I did it in mine. Mine was even worse. <laughs> so we'll go into here and then this render is going to need a method called submit, which just basically means we want to submit this object to the render to be drawn every frame. So I'll say public void submit and we will take in a game object. Then we'll just say this dot game objects dot add game object. So very simple, just submitting it. And then we're going to want one more method called render. So we'll say public void render. And this will actually take in a graphics 2D object, G2. We'll hit Alt Enter on that one. Then basically what we're going to do for now is we're just going to say for each game object, G and our game objects, we'll just say G.draw G2. So it looks like it's going to behave exactly the same as we have it now. There's not really anything that's changing. Um, let's go back into our scene real quick. Every scene also needs a render. So we'll say render, render. And then we will go up here and we'll say this dot render equals a new render. And then this takes in a camera. 
this dot camera. Okay, so we have it all set up. We sort of have our render, our camera, all that stuff. It's nice. And then let's go back into our level editor scene. And right here we have draw and we're just doing this. Instead of doing this, we'll actually say g2.draw or we'll say render.draw or render g2. Okay, and I'm just gonna change this to be black because we don't really need a color. And then let's go real quick, see what happens. Okay, so we just get a black screen and we don't see our player drawn to the screen, which is right because we have not submitted it to the renderer. So if we go into here and then just type in render.submit player and then run this one more time. There we go, we got our player drawn. This may seem like a super complicated way to just do the same exact thing we were doing. We're creating this giant wrapper and everything, but it's actually really useful because we're gonna add support for things like Z indexing. And uh, so that's just drawing players relative to how far or back they are. So drawing something in front of something else. And we also wanna draw things relative to the camera. We don't wanna to have to worry about that when we're calling our draw method on each individual object. They don't care about where the camera is. They don't care about their Z index, all that stuff. That should be taken care of by the render and the render alone. And then they should only care about drawing themselves. So that's why we're sort of separating it like this. Uh, let's go ahead and draw out how exactly this will work. How do you draw something relative to something else? So how do we draw all the objects relative to where the camera's at? Let's see. What do we want to happen? We want to have a camera, which is basically like a viewport. And then we want to have like objects. This is our game world. Um, maybe the players like right here because the player would be in the camera, some more objects and then like a couple spikes and then some more objects for the rest of the game world. And then we want like the crown to go right through. So basically what we want is this viewport, which is what we get right here. And this viewport is our camera. And we want to have this game world, which is this large envelope. So this will be our game world. But we only want to be able to see what's inside of the camera's view because we don't care about what's outside of that camera's view. So how do we do that? Well, this can be our window, so our camera, which is really just our window. And then we can have everything moved so that it's in the proper. So if the camera's X, we have a camera X and Y right here. And we can just move whatever is in here to be at the windows zero. So really what we have is a screen, which the top left is zero, zero. So that's all we have really sort of in this abstract concept that we have, these all have an X and Y, which is some position like way out in the world. So what we can do is we can use the cameras X and Y, which is where this window is sort of quote unquote in the world. And then what we can do is we can just say the game objects X minus the cameras X and the game objects Y minus the cameras Y will give us a position relative to this zero, zero mark because then we'll be taking like, okay, so this is where the camera is here. And then this is where the game object is here. And if we just subtract all that, then we will end up back at our position relative to zero, zero, which is what we want. So it's really simple. Actually, we're just gonna be subtracting the X and the Y from the game objects, uh, temporarily resetting their transforms, their positions. And then we'll just be redoing it back to what they actually are after we draw everything. And so we'll, that way we'll have everything drawn in the window, but we won't actually change the position of the object or anything. So let's see how that actually works in the code and it will hopefully make a little bit more sense when we do that real quick. So if we go back to our code and then we go to our renderer, what we can do is before we draw each object, we will set up a simple uh, old transform sort of. So we'll say um, uh, transform, old transform, equals and then we'll say alt enter on that and then we'll say uh, the game objects we'll say new transform and then we'll take the game objects because this takes in a vector to position so we'll say g dot transform dot position and so this will create a new transform for us and then what we'll do is we'll set this old transforms rotation to the game objects rotation and then we'll set this old transforms scale to and actually, we don't even need to worry about this stuff because we're just worrying about literally where it is on the screen. So we just need the position. And then what we'll say is g.transform.position equals 
new vector. And just like we said, we're going to say the game objects transforms position dot x minus the cameras position dot x. And then we'll say d dot transform dot position dot y minus the cameras transform or the camera's position dot y. So now we're just moving the game object. We're literally moving it back to where it should be in relative in translation to zero zero. And then after we finish drawing it, we will move that game object back. So we'll say g dot transform equals old transform. And then that should take care of everything for us. It should move it and then move it back. If we run this, we may see the game object. Okay, so the game object is in a different place now. And we actually see it's not copying those. So because we are using this and then we're saying g.draw2. And then we're saying g.transform equals old transform. So we should actually just write down the rotation equals g.transform.rotation. And then old transform.scale equals new vector2. And we'll say g.transform.scale dot x g dot transform dot scale dot y that way we don't lose that information when we reset right here so if we go back one more time then we have the object rotating now let's move the camera and if we move the camera to the right the player should move to the left so let's see if that actually works correctly as well we'll go to our level editor scene and i'm actually going to change this to white i don't like the black so much <laughs> so we'll do that just so that we can see that player a little bit better and then right in here, we'll say camera dot position dot X plus equals DT times one F. So one pixel per second to the right. We'll actually make this like five pixels per second to the right. And let's see what happens when we move it. And is the player moving to the left? I think it is, but it's going very slow. <laughs> let's do like 20 pixels per second. Run that one more time. Okay. And so you can see the player is definitely moving to the left. And if we increase that just a little bit more, to like uh, 60. There we go. The player moves because the camera is moving to the right, but really we're just moving the player back and forth a bunch of times really quickly. But we have a camera and the camera works fine now. So this is really good. We will expand this render in the future to support Z indexing and all that stuff. Um, but for now, this is satisfactory for what we need. This is about it for this tutorial. We set up a simple render. In the next tutorial, what we're going to be going over is we'll probably actually try and add some physics, very simple physics, like I said, actually have the player drop and hit the ground, and then we'll have the camera move along with the player. So I know I said we would do that in the last tutorial, but it took a little bit longer than I thought it would to do all the transformation stuff and everything. So that will be the next tutorial, hopefully. I'll see you guys then. If you like this, please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.